Welcome back to Educator.com's Application Essay Course. This lesson is the first part of our two-part series on writing, and it's about writing the beginning. Let's get started. All right, the beginning of your essay is all about two things. It's about the hook and the thesis statement. And the reason the beginning gets its own lesson all to itself, while we have another lesson that's devoted to the middle and the end together, is because the, be the beginning is the make or break part of your essay. This is where you get your reader's attention. This is where you get them sucked into what you're doing. This is where you get them to voluntarily come along with you for the ride. So you got to get the beginning right, so we're spending extra time on it. So what is a hook? That's going to be our first point in our lesson. We're going to look at what it is, how it works, and how to make your own. We're going to talk about how to write a good hook by using an opening image, by piquing your reader's interest, by using surprise, and as you may have guessed, I like to have fun. You're going to have fun writing hooks. Be as audacious as you can. This is going to be a fun lesson. All right, then we're going to talk about the thesis statement, what it is, how it works, and how to find it when you're writing your essay. What am I writing about? We're going to talk about that. And also where to place it in your essay. You can actually put it in a couple of different places to make it work. All right, to begin with, what is a hook? You might have heard your English teacher talk about this, but just in case you weren't listening, a hook is some element at the beginning of your writing that grabs the reader's attention, literally grabs them with a hook and pulls them along with you. Let's look at some examples. These are first sentences of famous and or best-selling novels, so let's look at how they work. On Friday noon, July the 20th, 1714, the finest bridge in all Peru broke and precipitated five travelers into the gulf below. That's the first sentence of Thornton Wilder's The Bridge at San Luis Rey. You may have been assigned to read that for English class. Now, what makes this sentence work is both the specificity, you have things like, you have the day and the time, Friday noon, you have the date, you have the year, and then you have the finest bridge in all Peru. You got a story about a bridge breaking. Bridges break all the time, but this was the best bridge in the country. Obviously, something a little bit unusual happened here. A really good beginning sets a mood or a tone, and gets you interested in characters or a situation. The sudden failure of the finest bridge gets a lot more attention than a rickety bridge broke and some poor people walking on it fell off. All right. If I am out of my mind, it's all right with me, thought Moses Herzog. That's the first sentence of Saul Bellow's novel Herzog. Now, what makes this one work? If I am out of my mind, and it's all right with me, you have contrast. Most people would view being insane as a problem. Herzog does not. This is actually a favorite first sentence from one of my childhood books. It was not a dark and stormy night by James Howe in the celery stalks at midnight. Now, if you've read any of James Howe's books, uh, the most famous is Banicula. They're about uh, a group of pets, one of which happens to be a vampire rabbit. This is the sort of thing you love when you're 10. And they, have, they very much have a tongue-in-cheek style. So in this case, Howe is taking off on Edward Bulwer Lytton's sentence, it was a dark and stormy night, which has kind of become this cliche of how to start a story. And he starts with, it was not a dark and stormy night. So you're like, okay, now I'm a little freaked out. I was expecting it to be a dark and stormy night. This is a book about a vampire rabbit, after all. Wanted some scary, but it's not. Now you're kind of nervous, and it gets you interested in the story. And finally, it can hardly be a coincidence that no language on Earth has ever produced the expression as pretty as an airport. Once again, we use surprise. We hear a lot of as pretty as a something, as pretty as a picture, for example. But we never hear as pretty as an airport. We're putting two things that don't normally go together together, pretty and airport. This gets you interested in the story, and it also establishes that the author has a sense of humor, which makes him more entertaining, and you're more likely to read the rest of the book. And indeed, Douglas Adams sold a great many copies of The Long Dark Tea Time of the Soul, which is a funny title in and of itself. 